hello guys and welcome back to the channel so in today's video i'll be teaching you guys how to build an offline first a mobile app in flutter so what that um, technically means is let's say you have a portion of your app that requires internet connection to function properly but i want to have a mechanism where you can cache let's say the latest data that was i mean received from your server or your database so the user can still access um information even without internet connection right so it's so not like when you don't have internet connection the app is not going to function at all you may still be able to view previously cached data which i mean you've implemented so um in this particular example i'm going to use a project i'm working on and i've implemented this um offline first approach for the profile section of the app so i'll be taking you guys through that so let's first continue with google um use this authentication method and i'll take you guys through how i'm going about that so let's first sign in uh, right so there is the home page of the app and you can find the profile over here right so the data over here is being cached locally so your profile and then whatever information you have here right your personal account so um, let's say your name and then your email now when you don't have internet connection you can still see this data right even without internet connection i don't need internet connection to i mean pull this data and this data is not coming from firebase authentication right so there's no display name of the actual person signed in this from a data that has been set up so in order to do that i have the profile feature in my source directory and in the data section that's where you'll be doing your caching right so if, if you're not used to this kind of architecture or directory structure then i recommend you check out my video on clean architecture with flutter so i've actually what i've done is i've separated out the features this app has into um folders over here right so in the profile section this is where i have everything about the profile that i'm caching now within the profile i have data domain presentation and we're we'll looking at the data section of this now in the data this is where i manage anything that has to do with the profile data so i have two folders over here which is local and remote now the local and remote are responsible for handling the local data of the profile and then the remote data of the profile respectively so when i come to the profile um, i mean the profile local database i realize i have some implementation over here now in order to implement the offline first approach in any part of your app you need to have a local database that you'll be saving those information to so whether hive get storage shared preferences any key value um database local database will do and depending on the type of data you are storing you may use i mean a more complex database like sqlite right like sqlite or um yeah like sqlite so i have some abstract class over here which is just defining what uh, methods i want to do or what features i want to have on this particular database so um i have something called save right which is a method on this um, profile local database and what it does is that it takes in a profile type and then it saves it in my get storage so I'm using get storage for managing um, the state over here which is it's just like using shared preferences if you're familiar with shared preferences it's just the same thing so i'm saving this particular profile locally and all that i do is i just call get storage and then i write using a key so i've defined a key over here which is profile key and then i just convert the profile to json and the reason is that normally you would be storing these um, data in a map form or 
yeah, a JSON form. So this JSON form just does a conversion of the profile type to a map, right? So the profile has an ID name and then some other data. So you just have to have one, a method that saves that particular information you want to save locally to your local database, right? And the local database I'm using this case is get storage. So um, how do I actually use this? So let's look at the implementation over here. And then also I have a remote database that communicates with Firestore. So I have retrieving of the user and then also saving of that user. Right. So if you're familiar with Firebase, this should be just, I mean, um, simple Firebase query. So how am I actually do, um, using this site? Right? So if you come to the account or authentication section of um, my app, um, in the domain repositories, auth repository, I have a method over here that is continue with Google and then continue with phone, continue with Apple, right? So let's look at what we actually do when you tap on the continue with Google button, which takes in the profile. So in the repositories, right, what I do is I first sign in the user using just the normal Firebase auth and then I check if the user already exists, right? So in my remote database, I have a way of checking if the user already exists. Now, if the user already exists, I just retrieve the user's data from um, the remote database. Then I save that particular user's data in the local database. Now, if the user does not exist, which means um, it's a new account, what I do is I save that particular profile in the remote database and then save it in the local database as well. Now, when um, you go to the profile page, which is your account page, what I do is, um, so back to the profile page, we have repositories and then we have profile repository implementation. So I have this retrieve over here, right? So whenever you come to this page, I call this retrieve method. Now, what this retrieve method does is it checks if you are connected to the internet. Right? So, if you are connected to the internet, I always want to have the latest data related to your profile. So, if you are not connected to the internet, then I just call my local database retrieve. Now, I'm going to my local database to get the data I've saved there. Right? And how do I save this data? It's when you log in at first. Right. When you log in at first and you finish setting up your account, I just save your data to both my remote database and then my local database. Now, if you don't have internet connection, I just fall back to my local database and retrieve whatever information I have. And this is just a check to make sure that um, we get the actual data, like there is no now or whatever. Right. So I return that local profile. If you have internet connection, I just go straight to my remote database. I pass in your user ID and then I retrieve your remote I mean, profile because I always want to have the latest data when you have internet connection. Right. So to actually build an offline first approach, I mean app, it's not very difficult, right? All you have to do is you have to have two data sources and then based on whether the person is connected to the internet or not, you can retrieve one of those data. And I have a way of checking if the person is connected to the internet, and then I retrieve one of these. In other cases, you may also want to retrieve the offline data, regardless of whether the person is connected to the internet or not. Now, what if the person updates the profile or like, I mean, that's something else. So whenever you, um, save the profile not save directly but whenever you update um the profile right so there's update whenever you update your profile i save it to your local database and then i save it to the remote database as well right so i make sure you are connected to the internet if that's true then i save your profile to your local database 
and then I save that simple file to the remote database. So it's much easier to work it out that way. And that's it. So it's basically the concept building an offline first approach. You just have to um, have two data sources for your app and based on a certain condition, you may save or you may show the user a different version of the data, whether the online version or the local version. So yeah, that's it. If you like this video and want me to go into details about how to implement this on a different project, you can leave that in the comment section and I will do that. See you guys in the next one.